Yo, what is good, Jets Nation? Welcome back to Jets Media. This is Richie, and in this video, I'm finally going to give you guys my recap to the Jets Patriots home opener that got wrapped up yesterday. I'm sorry, I was unable to make a video last night because, as you guys know, it was at MetLife Stadium. It was like a three and a half, four hour car ride home. I was exhausted when I got back, especially after watching that performance. So I said to myself, all right, I'm going to wake up early Monday morning and make you guys this video and give you guys my overall thoughts about what I saw from the New York Jets in this game obviously we did not get the outcome we all expected the stadium was absolutely electric before the game with fireman ed hyping it up with the jets 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 chants and obviously it is the dud and we are very disappointed in what we saw from the new york jets but i'm here to tell you you know and i don't want to make it seem like i'm always you know trying to force positive narrative but there's a lot of things that we can take away positively from this game outside of zach wilson obviously so i'm going to get into everything my thoughts of zach wilson's performance my thoughts of the coaching staff uh, what they did adjustment wise um, how they really looked at the week one tape and what they needed to improve on and we saw a big improvement in week two in certain aspects from this team and a lot of you know deep dives into this game i'm really excited to get into it before we hop into the video we're just going to hear a quick word from our sponsor of the video betql want to take an advantage over your sports book you need to download betql the only app you'll need to make smart bets their bets computer model scans over 350,000 unique bets per year to give you a best bet recommendation for every game across all major sports and gives you the reasoning behind why you should place the bet. Their model covers everything from spreads, over-unders, and player prop bets. Don't want to use the model and prefer to do the research yourself? BetQL has all the necessary tools for your betting research needs. Everything from sharp data, line movement, team summaries, lineup and injury breaking news, and even leaderboards to track your success. Head to the App Store or Google Play Store now to download BetQL. You can also head to try.betql.com slash jetsmedia to get started now. Enter the discount code jetsmedia at payment checkout for 25% off of their subscription offerings. You can find all this information in the description of this video. Make sure to check out their bet mgm offer in the description in order to receive a free year of betql also make sure you check out the sportsbook offers page if you live in one of the eligible states to claim free offers upon signing up at one of the many sportsbooks listed don't miss out on your chance to beat the sportsbook this football season once again, thank you so much to BetQL for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to get a chance to beat your sports book this football season, use my code JETSMEDIA down below for a 25% off discount. So now, let's get into this Jets Patriots recap. So first and foremost, the first thing we have to talk about is definitely Zach Wilson because he lost us this game, as we all know. Outside of Zach, and I'm going to get into it later on, I'm very impressed with what I saw from pretty much everybody outside of Zach Wilson. Obviously, there's a little glimpses that you can nitpick, like some players didn't play really well. But overall, this team looked very good outside of Zach. And what I mean by that is... I really liked our chances in this game if Zach just didn't throw four interceptions. And, hey, that seems like a cop-out. Well, uh, yeah, that's obvious. The Jets had four turnovers. The Patriots had zero. It's impossible to win the game. But what Zach Wilson did was he just absolutely killed our momentum and killed our drives. And he tried to be a little too aggressive with his throws. Now, am I going to say, sit here and tell you guys that Zach Wilson's not the answer and he's a bust and Jets fans should give up on him? Absolutely not. For anybody that's saying that, Please don't do that because me personally, going into this season with Zach Wilson and his young Jets coaching staff, I knew that there's going to be a game exactly like this. Now, did I think it's going to come the home opener in the game I was at? No. And obviously, in the moment, it sucks because you're living a nightmare and it is a very disappointing situation where you see your rookie quarterback go out there and throw turnovers and throw up interception not being uh being careless with the football trying to be too aggressive and obviously it sucks but i knew going in that this is going to happen this season and i'm i i understand where this jets team is right now with this very young nucleus of guys and it's a really good sign that everybody outside of zach including the run game the offensive line the pass rush the defense everything looked good outside of zach and i'm here to tell you guys if Zach Wilson protected the ball and he had a decent game, I like our chances in this game. Obviously, that sounds like, you know, you can't really say that because you don't know what would have happened. But the defense kept us in this game. The offensive line was playing well. The run game was playing well. And Zach just kept hurting us with trying to be a little too aggressive. I felt like, you know, he felt the energy from MetLife. He felt the energy from the home crowd. And he wanted to impress us. He really wanted to get those explosive plays. And he forced the ball. So the first um, pass of Zach Wilson's day was forcing it to uh, Corey Davis. 
and it was tipped up by JC Jackson, and then Jackson came down with the interception. You know, that was, uh, okay, that was a, a tough interception from Zach. That's not really, you know, I, I really like him trusting Corey Davis in those tight situations. I would like to see Corey go get the ball, but that was just a good play from the Patriots defensive backs. And then the second pass attempt from Zach Wilson was another uh, interception. That play, Zach Wilson rolled to his right. He had Elijah Moore for the check down. He was right in front of him, but instead... We have a rookie quarterback that's aggressive. He wants to make the big plays. So he throws it on the run to Corey Davis. It's a little high, but it is through Corey Davis's hands. And then it ends up being another interception. Um, and that was a really, you know, vibe kill because that was a, a drive where we had really good field position. The Patriots uh, special teams, they kicked it out of bounds in the kickoff. We get it at the 40 yard line. The run game is working. We gave it to Michael Carter. He makes someone miss first down run. And then we bounce back and that's uh, another turnover from Zach Wilson. So now getting into his third interception, this was his worst one of the day for sure. He stares down Elijah Moore. And he just absolutely, for some reason, throws it underthrown. That was the easiest interception for a Patriots defensive back he'll ever get. Right when I saw that ball leave Zach Wilson's hands, I'm like, that is not a good throw. And that's when you can tell that Zach starts to lose confidence and he's starting to, you know, get all over the place and his fundamentals not right. He's not stepping into his throws. And that's part of the rookie flows that he's going to have to learn that, you know, in the NFL, you can't just throw up a jump ball. You can't just, you know, think that you can zip the ball here. We are in the NFL. The game is a lot faster here. And this is a really good learning experience from Zach Wilson. And then his fourth interception early in the third quarter was simply, you know, him not really stepping into his throw, forcing it down the field. It was second and long due to a lot of penalties, and he just absolutely missed the throw, and it was right to McCourty, and those were Zach Wilson's four interceptions. Zach finished 19 of 33, 210 passing yards, no touchdowns, four interceptions, and had a yard per attempt of 6.4. So yes, Zach Wilson looked really bad today. There's no sugarcoating. He looked absolutely terrible, and he lost us this game. He single-handedly lost us this game with the four turnovers. You can't expect the Jets team to go out there and win when you have a quarterback putting up four interceptions and no touchdowns. It's that simple. There's no sugarcoating it. This is a really good learning experience from Zach Wilson. Hopefully, he can really, you know, dive deep into the film, understand that he needs to make sure that he stays in the pocket when, you know, the protection is good. He needs to make sure he doesn't force the ball too much. And Robert Sala had a phenomenal quote at the end of the game that this is a really good learning experience for Zach because he needs to learn that it's okay to play a boring game of football. And what that means is you don't have to try to get the explosive play every single time. It's okay to check it down. Like, for example, Mac Jones and the Patriots, what they did, offensively speaking, Mac Jones was just a very good system quarterback, and he didn't try to do anything special. He kept checking it down, quick reads, screen passes, got rid of the ball fast, didn't really try any crazy plays downfield. And that's the example of a boring offense that's successful. You know, the Patriots, they've been a pretty boring offense for the past 20 years, but that, and a boring does not mean it's a bad thing. Like when I say boring, it's not negative. And that's what Robert Sala is trying to say. If you're boring with the ball, that means you're smart with the football, picking up the first downs, winning the time of possession. And the Jets, for example, they won time of possessions in this game. They have the most passing yards in this game. They had the most rushing yards in this game. They had the most sacks in this game, I think, actually, because I think late in the fourth quarter, Zach got sacked like four times in a row in garbage time. But all in all, the Jets really won this game all around the ball besides the turnover margin, and the Patriots capitalized. If you're going up against Bill Belichick, you can't expect to win when your quarterback puts up four interceptions. Now, let's get into this to uh, some other players, and there's a lot of positives outside of Zach Wilson, guys. I really believe that what I saw from the Jets team is a very good sign because, number one, the coaching staff. What we saw from them in their, you know, going into the film and understanding what they need to improve on after looking at the Carolina tape and what we saw in week two, it's astronomical. What do we need to improve on from week one? Pass protection, run game, run blocking, running back game, um, uh, pass rush, getting to the quarterback. That's all things that this, this Jets team looked so different in. And that's a big testament to the coaching staff going into the film, making the proper adjustments, telling the players what they need to do, motivating them, making sure they have a really good game plan going into this game. And that's the crazy thing because it's not like Zach Wilson had four interceptions because the pass protection wasn't good. And he was running for his life like Carolina. It was simply uh, Zach Wilson trying to be too aggressive and trying to you know force the ball at times. So the pass protection was great. The running game was great. The defense was great. 
that's a really good thing that the team around Zach is developing because we have to remember what this team is right now. We're young. We have rookies all over the field. We're trying to develop an identity and a culture. And if everybody outside of Zach in this game played well, I'm okay with that because the expectations going into the season is not about the wins and losses. It's about the development of this team around Zach Wilson. It's not only about Zach. It's about everything around him. Obviously, the priority is Zach Wilson. You don't have to tell me that. I understand that. So, the number one guy that impressed me the most on offense is definitely Michael Carter, the rookie running back. He finished with 11 rushing attempts with 59 yards, averaging 5.4 yards per carry, had a long run of 14, which was a really good one, and then he had two receptions for 29 yards. He had this one reception, which was insane. He caught it. He had the ball in open field. He uh, Someone tries to wrap him up, and he breaks a tackle. He makes another guy miss, and he you know bursts up the sidelines, gets, gets hyped up. Another run on first down. He has a crazy juke move. Michael Carter looked like a guy out of college that he lived up to the hype. We knew when we drafted Mike Carter, we were very excited about him. We knew that he was a top five running back in the draft. He's a very shifty guy. And we finally saw the pure talent on display. We need to make sure we get Carter the ball in the open field because that's when he's dangerous. That's when he can make people miss. He has great balance. He has great vision, great footwork. And we just need to make sure that we take advantage of that talent. And that's exactly what we did yesterday. And then Ty Johnson had a very good game as well. 12 rushes, 50 yards, averaging 4.2 yards per carry. Had a long run of 17. And then Tevin Coleman had five rushes, 24 yards, averaging 4.8 yards per carry with a, uh, a long run of 17 yards so the three running backs played very well and that's a very good sign for the offensive line as well they were pat they were run blocking a very good game elijah vera tucker had probably his best game of his career well obviously he only played twice in his nfl career but he definitely had a very good game compared to his rookie debut the offensive line morgan moses uh connor mcgovern greg van roten did not have a good game and i think we can all expect that he's definitely the weaker link of this entire o-line um but the one thing i will say about this offensive line that is definitely something to bring up they did not have a perfect game because the penalties were killing the jets the amount of times that we had a pretty good explosive play and it got called back because of offensive holding or chop blocks or all these play all these penalties really hurt us because we had momentum and it was killed we had a great play and it's getting called back so the offensive line was not perfect that's not what i'm saying but i love what i saw from this jets o-line and their ability to deal with adversity deal with their you know struggling with uh week one against carolina understanding that they need to come out here with a different approach a different game plan different technique and fundamentals and we saw on a full display being able to open up holes for the running back and protect Zach Wilson is a very good sign that they did, especially with the coaching staff. And then when it comes to the receivers in this game, Braxton Berrios is all over the place for some reason. As we know, Jameson Crowder was out with this game. He was a scratch because of his groin flared up on Friday. He finished with seven receptions for 73 yards. Elijah Moore in his second game of his NFL career had four receptions for 47 yards. He definitely showed a lot of flash. We know that week one was a little disappointing. Um, but I really like what I saw from Elijah Moore in this game. And then Corey Davis got shut down. He was a, a very big negative in this game. I think that that second interception on Zach Wilson that went through Corey Davis's hands, we want to see Corey Davis bring that ball down. Uh, obviously, it's a high throw, but if it goes through your hands, we need to make sure that at least you knock it down or you bring it in for your uh, rookie quarterback. So Corey Davis, we knew going into this game that the Patriots and Bill Belichick's defense is trying to shut down Corey because he's our number one option. And that's exactly what they did. Now, let's get into the defensive side of the ball because this is a very good positive i love what i saw from this robert Sala jeff over coach defense cj mosley led the way with 10 total tackles and a pass deflection he looks like a different player right now obviously we have not seen a full uh, season of cj mosley we haven't even seen a full game of cj mosley before this season so cj was all over the place and then right behind him was michael carter the second the rookie slot cornerback out of duke eight total tackles very good day from the rookie and then bryce hall six total tackles really look good outside and coverage wise and then marcus may john franklin myers sheldon rankins all had sacks apiece quincy williams the older brother of uh quinn and williams got the start today at the mike linebacker position i believe he was all over the place he plays with violence we saw that big pop i love what i saw from quincy williams uh shaq lawson also showed a lot of pop at the line of scrimmage getting tackles for losses a lot so this defense, they did everything that we possibly could ask for in terms of keeping us in the game. The offense lost us this game. Zach Wilson lost us this game. Um, it's that simple. I love what I'm seeing from the defense. And it's funny because us Jets fans going into the season, we thought we were just like expecting that this offense 
might be a step ahead of our defense and we were completely wrong well i was completely wrong because that's what i thought um the offense is a step behind the defense looks very well coached even though that we're missing out on top guys like carl lawson for the season uh jared davis for the first uh part of the season uh vinnie curry out for the season we lost lamarcus joiner we lost a lot of players and the guys that are stepping up are still making a big impact and i'm loving what i'm seeing from this jets defense cj mosey being all over the place is a big sign uh, the cornerbacks, Brendan Eccles, uh, you know, shutting down the uh, the outside receivers. You know, the the cornerbacks was the biggest question mark going into the season, and they've had a very good start to the season. Will that last? We don't know. They're really young, and I'm expecting them to have games where they struggle. But so far, so good. Now to finish off the video, I just want to say, you know, obviously we are very disappointed in our rookie quarterback, Zach Wilson. But we have to realize that this is part of having a rookie quarterback. It's part of having a rookie offensive coordinator. These games are going to happen. Now, the big question is, how is he going to bounce back? How is he going to deal with this adversity? Is he, is he going to, you know, shrug this off and go out to Denver and play a really decent game? Or is he going to go out there in Denver and throw another three or three or four interceptions? That's a big question mark. I still have confidence in Zach to learn from his mistakes. I know that he's going to be, you know, getting shitted on all across social media and that that is going to happen when you are a new york jets quarterback and you put up a four interception game that's really what's going to happen there's no sugarcoating his performance he looked really bad showed like a couple flashes of ghoul plays but at the end of the day it doesn't matter if you basically lose this game i really put this entire game on zach wilson i really genuinely believe if he did not turn the ball over four times, we would have been in a really good situation to be competitive in the fourth quarter. I genuinely believe that with the way the defensive played, with the way that the offensive line played, with the way that the running game played, I put this game on Zach Wilson and Corey Davis, and that's okay because this game's, this season is not about wins or losses, in my opinion. It's about the development of the players. It's about the development of the culture, them dealing with adversity. Obviously, I want them to win every single game. I'm not saying tanking by any means. I'm, I'm going to be rooting for a W until the end of the season. I don't even care where we're at at the end. I don't care about draft picks. I want the Jets to win games, and this is going to be a big test for the coaching staff and Zach Wilson in particular to see what they can do going into week number three. So that's my thoughts about this game, guys. Leave a comment down below. I know this is a longer video, but I had a lot to say because... I finished watching the condensed film of this game this morning. I was at the game at MedLife, so it's hard to really see everything at the game opposed to being uh, behind your television watching it. So leave a comment down below your thoughts of this game. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Smash that like button if you guys enjoyed, and comment down below a jet emoji if you stayed until the end. And once again, shout out to the sponsor of this video, BetQL, the only app you'll need to beat your sports book this football season. I'll catch you guys in my next stream slash video, and have a great day. Let's go Jets. Peace.